So despite being presented of evidence that it certainly the Maureen McKelvey case uh, did include aspects of Horizon claims of bugs, balancing issues, calls to the helpline, and despite that evidence being presented, um, Sir Wynn, leading the inquiry in the end, brought uh, Suzanne Winter's evidence to a close as he felt that we were just going round in circles as she continues to repeat her assurance, despite the evidence presented in front of her, that actually there wasn't any aspect of Horizon involved in Maureen McKelvey's case, despite it being pointed out by herself, her solicitors, and through the Horizon Helpline. Let's jump into the inquiry. Could we have on screen, please, PNI 701 underscore 082. We can see this is a covering letter to your report produced um, <laughs> to the PSNI and ultimately the PPS. In Maureen McKelvey's case, it's dated January 2004. So scrolling down, this file refers to a theft from the post office. And that's the covering letter from the police. Scrolling up to the top, please, to the legal registrar. And then going to page four, please, we have the actual report. Scrolling down, please, we have your name next to Mr Thorpe's name as team leader. And the date of the report is December date report submitted, December 2002. Going please to page seven, about halfway down the page, you give an account of the case and starting the paid order unit. I'm just going to let you cast an eye down that rather than reading it all out for time reasons. So the paid order unit, Lisa Halley, London Derry, is responsible for checking the value of paid pension allowance files received from post offices. So if you remember before, she found some additional files and she was also asked about interview about some files and whether she wanted to check them. She decided not to. She said, you know, if this all balances out in the end. Uh, you know, this happens all the time. It's something I'm used to. There is a process in place that is risk assessment based, which identifies which offices are to be checked each week. This is done on a rotor system, so like a spot check of the all the post offices. Whilst conducting a routine rotor check on the paid pensions and allowance files dispatched by Clannabogan Klan Post Office, over claims were identified on each of the weeks examined, varying in value from 40p to £148, so from relatively insignificant to quite a proportion of money. The overclaims were generated by claiming non-existent pension and allowance files. So that's quite definitive there. It's not saying there's a mistake been made. It's saying these don't exist, which would presumably indicate some kind of fraud. The Post Office Limited Investigation Team, the one Suzanne Winters leading, when appraised of the situation, made arrangements to receive the paid pension and allowance pouches forward from Clannabogan Post Office to POU uh, Post Office Unit. Uh, Lisa Halley on behalf of the Benefits Agency, so the precursor to the Department for Work and Pensions these days. Local checks at the Post Office Limited Investigation Team revealed overclaims of a similar pattern to those identified by the POU, Lisa Halley. Les Thorpe and Suzanne Winter, Consignia Investigation Team, so Consignia was what Post Office was called very briefly at the time, attended the Post Office on Thursday the 4th of April 2002, so that was the day that the audit was done. Accompanied by John McKenney, a member of the security and audit team, a special audit was conducted by McKenney and the result of the audit was a shortage of £152.80. So we're not talking massive amounts each week, but there's clearly a regular shortage of similar amounts up to like £150 or so. And then going down to the bottom, please, we get to uh, penultimate paragraph, uh, the interview, and at the bottom... You say McKelvey could or would not offer a reason for the discrepancies and stated she had done everything to the best of her ability. Really? I mean, I'm pretty sure she did offer a reason for the discrepancies, didn't she, in the interviews when we looked at the transcripts from them. I'm pretty sure she said this happened all the time and it was usually found in this large account, I think, did they say for a local college? which bought a significant amount of stamps and then when she looked in to find the money, she could find it and make it balance um, most of the time what they didn't go into is obviously she did make some shortfall payments so presumably if she couldn't find it she made it good by contacting the helpline saying what do I do here and arrange to make payment of any shortfalls over the page please at the conclusion of the interview McKelvey was informed further checks needed to be completed of the pension and allowance McKelvey and Atherton were invited to observe the checking of the outstanding pensions and allowance pouches 
And just scrolling down, please, you see McKelvey offered no explanation regarding the additional overclaims identified. McKelvey has made no admissions of guilt in this matter and states she has done everything to the best of her ability. The discrepancies summarised on the pension schedule indicated his due to deliberate action and not error, and McKelvey is the only person with the appropriate access and opportunity. Maureen McKelvey has rendered herself liable to prosecution and in view of the availability of evidence to support such actions, these papers are forwarded for authorisation to prosecute. I mean, that's quite a bold statement there. So you're saying categorically, there's no way this is an error. This is a deliberate attempt to defraud the post office, which considering that we've seen some major holes in the evidence, particularly the transaction logs or lack thereof, seems to be an extremely bold conclusion to come to unless it's going to offer some kind of explanation and additional evidence for that. You do not mention here, do you, the references to balancing issues and the reference to computer error in the interview. Can you help with why not? And as a reminder, at this time, she had that available because it was in the original police report from 2004 and this is in 2004, this letter wasn't done in 2002, so that should have been available at the time based on the evidence we're seeing. That report there is regarding the whole investigation. And if you listen to the whole tape transcript, the computer was not... I'm trying to think what way you would say this, that the computer did not seem to be at the fault because <laughs> what was actually happening was a human, a person putting the information into the computer. On what basis is she making that assertion though? It's fine to make that assertion, but on what basis are they, is she claiming that that was her understanding and belief? And furthermore, if that was her understanding and belief, you would have no problem in the report uh, put in that there had been balancing issues because regardless of whether she said it in the interview and actually it feels from the bits that we've looked at she did quite clearly say she does have issues balancing she the, certainly the calls to the horizon help there so even if it hadn't been mentioned in the interview it's there in black and white in the horizon call logs which should have been available there to uh, the investigation team at the post office so it doesn't seem like if you've got cast iron proof that this has happened it wouldn't damage your case at all to say well she has raised these queries unless of course you think it actually does damage your case and therefore you want to omit it or maybe the report was just not as complete as it should have been we don't know unless she tells us you reached a conclusion that maureen McKelvey had rendered herself liable to prosecution were you applying any particular test in reaching that conclusion The test was that the uh, the whole investigation was based around foils being counted by a person and that person entering the information into the system. It wasn't that the system was doing something, it was a human being that was doing something. Absolutely agreed. So on that point, we can of course agree with her. But obviously, if you consider the system aspect, systems aren't infallible. It's not saying there is an error, but is there a potential error in an accounting software, even if you enter the figures correctly? Absolutely. That potential lies in any accounting software. So surely is worthy of investigation. At paragraph 70 of your statement, you say, in essence, that, that Mrs McKelvey's case relied heavily on paper vouchers, foils and cash requests and deliveries rather than on horizon discrepancies. But it's right, isn't it, that the defence raised horizon integrity issues at trial? Do you remember that? No, perhaps could you remind me? Well, let's start with a letter from Mrs McKelvey's solicitor dated the 22nd of July 2004. This is a letter seeking secondary disclosure and that's PNI 701 underscore 073. Looking please at paragraph two, this is a request. It appears to be what prompted disclosure of the documents we looked at earlier in August 2004. 
Uh, two, disclosure of all records held by the Post Office Limited Investigations Unit Social Security Agency of a report in the second half of 2001 by Mrs McKelvey to Gary Grugan in relation to problems with the Horizon computer system. And so they're seeking that. And then at paragraph three, disclosure of all records relating to the reporting of problems encountered at Clannabogan Post Office following the suspension of Mrs McKelvey in relation to the Horizon computer system. So disclosure was being sought, in essence, um, in relation to problems with the Horizon system. So do you recall that being a part of Mrs McKelvey's case? No, I'm sorry, I don't recall that. OK. Well, even if she doesn't recall it at this stage, it clearly was. You know, this is not hidden information. This isn't letters sent pre-trial, so it's fair enough that she doesn't recall it from 20 years ago. But factually, it's there in black and white for us all to see. Having seen that and being aware that it was a part of uh, Mrs McKelvey's case, albeit that you can't recall that now, do you accept that your characterisation of Mrs McKelvey's case as not relying on horizon discrepancies is not quite right? No, because it wasn't horizon discrepancies. See, this is the confusion I think she's kind of highlighting here. It's back to the, I don't think it was a Horizon case. I don't believe the case I was trying to build was a Horizon case. But in any investigation, the case is defined by the facts. So you might not want it to be a Horizon case, but if that is raised by as a defence by the person you're accusing, then it, it naturally becomes part of the case in the same way that she's saying the files were important. Well, the files became part of the case because... That was what she wanted to put in on the prosecution, on the investigatory side. But obviously the defence has that same opportunity to mount a defence to the charges brought. And the defence being mounted was at least in part, and a fairly significant part from everything we've seen, about horizon discrepancies and bugs in the horizon system. So without doubt, it is a horizon case if you want to characterise it that way. Maybe not solely, but it's certainly a factor. The case of Mrs. I think we're going round in circles now, really. Um, yes, sir. As interesting as it may be, um, <clears throat> I don't think Ms. Winter's characterization of the case is what is at the heart of this now, is it? It's uh, that, that was the last uh, of my topics for Ms. Winter. Um, I so I will hand over to core participants given the time.